know life's too short to settle for less You deserve the best mm-hmm. I like how you Welcome like back to Petty in the Post Today we are joined by E Creates, Edwin Garcia, myself, and this man right here needs no introduction, but it's Petty in the Post, so we're going to do him right. We're joined by the outspoken Laker fan, <laughs> second of his name, 13th member of the Jedi Council, King of the Seven Kingdoms, Protector of the Realm, and currently training to beat Goku. How are we doing, O'Shea Jackson Jr.? I'm doing pretty good, man. You know, I'm, I'm doing as, as well as... Patrick Beverly will allow me to do. Oh, um, man. You know, I'll be all right. I'm a Laker. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be all right. We're going to get into a lot of Lakers. Uh, definitely got get into a lot of Lakers talk. But first, we want to talk a little bit about you, what you got going on. And personally, you know, I have, I have some personal questions I have to ask as a fan myself who's been a fan for you for a long time. I'm going to be, you know, selfish and ask some questions that I want to ask, you know. So first thing that I want to ask you here. What was it like being a part of one of the most iconic ciphers of all time? This is during, <laughs> this is during the peak era of BET ciphers. This was like, man, I cannot wait. Like now, I'm not even sure if they're doing them anymore. Like like that, you know. But this was in the peak era when it was like you were. Go- if you are on a BET cipher, you're spinning. We have 2011. We got you, your brother Doughboy. Your father, it was a lineage freestyle, you know, of Cypher. Yeah. And we had um, Rev Run and his son. What was it like being a part of that? Um, it definitely was dope. Uh, anytime I get to do anything with uh, my my father and uh, my older brother, Daryl, you know, I, it was a good time. And, you know, it's a little bit of pressure because you like, you know, we can't let Rev and his <laughs> sons outdo us. You know, we got to go up in there and... You know, my uh, my biggest hit, you know, my biggest punchline in that was, uh, of course, the the Miami Heat line. They yes. had, you know, they had just got their little big three put together. And at that time, you know, I'm coming off uh, back-to-back chips, so I felt disrespected once again, you know, as I am. So, yeah, I had to put my Laker bar in there. Look at me, like 18, good Lord. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. But, yeah, that was, um, that was a, a, a dope moment. Every now and then somebody will will tweet me that line. Um, damn, my brother got a mean lynch mob chain right there. But um, yes. it, was a, it was a cool moment. You know, uh, Rev and his, his boys are dope. Uh, I love that I got to be a part of it. I remember hating that they don't give me a full 16. They don't get <laughs> you want uh, to get your bars in. And I'm watching my dad and Rev give this damn recipe <laughs> worth of bars. <laughs> Yo, Rev Rev run at a, a dang near full song. Yeah, I'm like, bro, I'm like, all right, we get short changes, whatever. This is my villain origin story started. <laughs> and uh yeah, and also my name at the time uh was Oh My Goodness. It was just something that I, I always said. I just I was a big fan of uh like the and one mixtape and stuff like that. So yeah. Like, you know, baby and all that. Like, oh my goodness. I just kind of ran with it. And my dad gave me the name OMG on the Ellen show. And he like said it on TV. So I was like, well, thanks. Now I got to go by this. <laughs> yeah, so no I, choice. I was like, yo, all right. Uh, trying to make this cool. I hated the name. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, a, it was a cool part of my life. Great opportunity. And uh, yeah, I love that. I love that cipher. For people who don't know, because I do know, the line that he's re- that he was referencing is about, referencing was this rap ish is kind of like the NBA because everybody talking heat until they come to LA. Don't let that one go over your head. Going, looking, was he looking forward in the future? You know, LeBron was coming. He's like, yo, oh, bro, listen, listen. Woo! working my little double entendre, you know. Yes, my guy. About the, you know, just the the scheme of rap, and then also having to throw my NBA punch line. I'm a Laker first and foremost. Yes, you know, I, I let, let people know like what, what's on top of the trophy is the gold ball. So in order yeah. to get there, you gotta get to the gold ball. Baby. Exactly, but also reminding them that you're a predator with the metaphor, 
right? Oh, yeah. Predatory. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now that I've gotten to, you know, relive that and enjoy that for myself selfishly, I do want to talk to you a little bit about um, one thing I really appreciate you, about you as a Laker fan is that you, and we'll get a little bit more into Lakers soon, yeah. but I think this is a good segue. Um, one thing I really appreciate about you is that you're very outspoken online. I see a lot of celebrities and a lot of people who are high profile high profile scared to you know in um, embrace that and speak with the fans and converse and I, one thing that i like always noticed that you're not afraid to do that where does that come from um it's because when you know before before you know these talk shows or radio shows or, or you know any type of sports show really gave a damn about me and i was just a fan at home i would watch you know like first take or Colin Cowherd or, or, you know, any of these shows that would bring or uh, uh, Sports Nation. I miss Sports Nation. But when uh, mm -hmm. when they would bring out these Laker fans, they would be so political, you know, mm -hmm. and they would be so, <laughs> like, you know, politicking and, you know, yeah. <laughs> like we just happy to be here. And I was just dying for somebody to just come up and let them know how worthless y'all team is. <laughs> like, it, it just it would drive me crazy of just like, well, man, you better, you better don't let them joke on us. Don't let them, you know, yeah, they licks in on us without no rebuttal. How dare they? And then so, you know, if 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 something's not happening at the speed you wanted to, you should probably do it yourself. So I got famous just to force myself on the talk show. <laughs> so I can just keep it clean. And, I love uh, it. Let them know that, like, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy for y'all. Y'all single digit championship teams. You know, get y'all shine. Everybody mm -hmm. deserves champagne once in their life. <laughs> some of them haven't had it yet. That's the that's my issue. Some if somebody, don't deserve it. They don't even. Have, they haven't even had the shit. They're talking about oh the uh you know the Pelicans won the trade, bro. We have a championship. We have a banner because of that. Y'all yeah, right. yeah. never experienced that. I'm glad you're enjoying not winning, but we don't do that. We either yeah, win or we like, lose. Even if you get your one. <laughs> okay. Seventeen. Welcome so to the conversation. Way. <laughs> long way. <laughs> long way. <laughs> love it. Love it. Um. So now, Edwin, I'll, I'll give it to, uh, hand it over to you. I know you had some questions regarding uh, Swagger. Yeah, so obviously you've been on an incredible run uh, as of late, you know, uh, with all the movies you've been doing, all the TV shows you've been doing. You know, definitely want to hear about Cocaine Bear later because that sounds crazy. <laughs> And uh, then the thieves I really love. I won't spoil the movie for those who missed it. But that plot twist in the end, I was like that uh, that wire meme. I was like, oh, yeah. I, was like, oh I never yeah. expected it for real. So you know, there's been a lot of great stuff you've done. But uh, you know, Swagger's one of your more recent ones, and Apple TV exclusive, which is interesting because you know Apple's kind of started to take over the streaming you know platforms the last two three years or so. So um, one thing you mentioned was the physicality of the show in terms of like basketball. You guys were like legit playing basketball. So tell me about what that was like on set, you know, having to play like kind of in some intense positions and, you know, you yourself uh, giving buckets to Jace over there. On that yeah, first yeah. yeah. Jace, uh, Jace Carson is played by uh, Isaiah Hill, who uh, came from the court uh, to the camera. And um, yeah, you know, he, he lets you know how good he is on a daily basis. And, um, you know, it, it was cool. You know, his uh, his youth was the issue. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, when when we filmed that, you know, boy was pushing 30. I'm, I'm close to my last max contract. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so keeping up with him, keeping up with the rest of the guys, it's, it's, a, it's a toll on, a, on an old man like myself. But uh, it's fun, you know, especially now, you know, we're filming season two right now. Mm. And Den of Thieves has me training, has me getting ready. So I'm a little lighter on my feet. And uh, we, uh, we, we've we gone at it a little bit. It's, it's mm. all fun and games. But I'm uh, I'm petty in the post, bro. You better watch out for me. <laughs> Let's go. See, that's what I like to hear. You know what I'm saying? You got to score on them and let them hear it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like Birdman. It's like Birdman when he was uh, in that interview. He's like, "Nah, if we have a problem, you gonna feel me." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you gotta make sure. Me. <laughs> you, you you me. He's like, "I'm saying it to you." <laughs> yeah, bro, and the thing is, I uh, I got you know my mama mentality. So like, if you gonna beat me, you gonna at least remember this ass whooping. Like you gonna you gonna have to <laughs> a little bit, bro. 
I want, I want yes, a, sir. You know, a waking up in the morning a little like, yeah, that, that little tense you feel in that rib. That's O'Shea, bro. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You go, you, so if you beat one, me, you're going to feel it the next day. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to earn it. <laughs> One other part, um, you know, the, the show is it's such an interesting show. I love the intro, you know, where there's like all these like kind of like painted, you know, drawings and it kind of clips. It. It's one of the few shows I actually don't skip intro when it pops up. Cause, like, it just looks dope. You know, so it's very colorful when it starts. And what I was surprised when I saw the show was it really deals with everything. Right. Uh, politics, you know, assault, you know, the politics of the game, the politics of the world. Uh, I just found that so fascinating that, you know, y'all weren't afraid to kind of talk about everything. And it doesn't feel like it's beating you over the head with it. It just feels like this is their lives. And, like, this is you're getting a peek into their lives. So of all the different storylines in Swagger, which one was your favorite uh, from the whole series so far? Um, obviously, you know, uh, everyone I'm involved in is always <laughs> But uh, my, you know, uh, uh, two two of the guys that, you know, as far as, their acting and you know just where their their stories went um a guy by the name of solomon i don't i don't know your last name solomon i'm sorry but uh <laughs> he plays uh phil marksby our center mm -hmm. and you know he really brought it when it came to uh the reveal of why he's so tough why he's gone through the things that he's gone through in the relationship with his mother and the relationship with his father he really brought out uh, a key like inner beast within him that I, I I appreciated as an actor, but also because I've I've grown and known the boys so much, uh, mm -hmm. and now they old, so I feel weird calling them boys. They they you know they old now, so the guys. Uh, but to see him go through that shift and and knock those scenes out, those are heavy scenes that he had to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I respect it, and uh, I'm proud of him for it. Also, our um, it's a it's a as a guy on our squad plays uh, Musa. Uh, his name is Khalil Harris. That little dude is a problem. Like he is, he is going to go far in this business, and I'm already a fan of him. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, those those two uh, stood out for me. But I, you know, I love all my guys. They. You know, we all have a swagger group chat. Uh, mm -hmm. I really have taken on a role of, you know, whatever they need, you know, whatever they need from me, any type of advice, um, anything they want to pick my brain or anything like that. And uh, I'm, I'm very welcome into the whole squad, really. Word, word. I actually have a question. I think this is a good segue since, or a good uh, question to ask since we've talked a little bit about hip hop and a little bit about acting. I was wanting to know, do you still have a connection to the the music aspect? Like, are you, you know, are you still jacking for beats these days, or yeah. you know? <laughs> uh, I mean, every, every now and then, I uh, every I, I make beats. Mm. Uh, I figured that was my best way to uh, stay in the music. Uh, I got an alias that I that I go by, so you know, eventually down the road. People gonna find out that it's me and be like, oh, but like I got yeah, I got an alias I go by because I, love I, that. I figure when it comes to Hollywood and everything that goes into you know the acting yeah. profession, I really feel like they typecast rappers and yes. it's it's an unfair light, but at the same time, we deal in the business of if if the suits, the producer, the director, if they can't see you in the role, you're not getting it. Okay. Mm. And you know, I just don't think they're never going to want to see Superman throwing hundred dollar bills. Or <laughs> the club. Like it's just not that they're, they're never going to see that. And so I, I felt like that would hinder my acting career to continue that. And, you know, if I if I make the beat, so you know you can't you can't get in trouble for what somebody said. I sold him the beat. I don't know. <laughs> it has nothing to do with me, but like I just feel like you know there's certain roles that they're scared to give my father because they only see him as Ice King, mm. you know. And I, I yeah. know I know my real dad. My real dad is not this angry tornado that everybody just you know sees. Yeah. Him, but if they can only, he has to he has to stay true. 
to Ice Cube in their minds. Yeah. And so it's, uh, you know, it's just something that I didn't want to give them to be able to box me in. My whole career has been about showing my versatility. When I did Straight out of Compton, a lot of the talk was, well, of course he could do that. You know, he's playing his dad. Like, mm. well, how hard is that? And so they try to diminish my accomplishments. And so what I told my team was every project that I do has to be worlds apart from the last one I did to show mm. versatility, to show that, like, mm. you can't box this guy in. So after Straight Outta Compton, we went the, like, dark comedy uh, with uh, uh, Aubrey Plaza, who is my favorite actress. She's oh, I like, love her so much, man. <laughs> and she, she, we did Ingrid Goes West. And Ingrid Goes West kind of let people see, like, all right, he's taking it serious. Ingrid Goes West got me into Sundance. It got me uh, top 10 Sundance performances. And then from there, we went into action with Den of Thieves. From Den of Thieves, we went into uh, the blockbuster with uh, Godzilla. After Godzilla, I went into comedy with Seth Rogen. After that, I went to the back to dramatics with Just Mercy. So I, I've always tried yeah. to be the polar opposite of the last thing I did uh, to show them that, you know, I'm a jack of all trades. Um, wow. And that, that's, that's just always been the goal. And I felt like they'll hinder that a little bit if they see me as a rapper. I love that. I love that. You know, that's one, um, you, when you were talking about it, it kind of reminded me of like what I've heard like Donald Glover say, you know what I mean? He's like one of those people who are like, like yourself, like Jamie Foxx, like him are like, there's your mercurial. There's a bunch of different things that you're into that are not just, you know, what they want to typecast you as even outside of that. You know, we, we've talked about uh, on, on the timeline, we talked about anime, we've talked yeah. about a bunch of different things. And, um, I think that's just like, I, I love to hear that because that's one of those, one thing that I know that me and you're around the same age. And when we were teenagers, it was still like, Hey, you need to act this certain way. If you're the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You need to act like this. Oh, you were into anime and you're not, you know, you don't fit this certain thing. Yeah. And it, and it was like, you had, you almost felt like alienated. You couldn't wear the hats that some of these other people could wear, you know, not to name yeah. anybody specifically, but you yeah. know, there's certain, yeah. certain hats that we're not allowed to wear. So I just, I, I really appreciate that. Thank you for, for giving us some insight there. Yeah, um, but, but now it's time to move into something that I'm so excited about because as a, as an, also a nerd, my brother is canon in the Star Wars universe. Oh, and we, <laughs> let's go. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hey, straight out of Compton into the nebula. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, we, wanna, we wanted to ask you some questions about Star Wars. And we were wanting to know, you know, how does being on the set of a Star Wars uh, production compare to other projects that you've been a part of? It doesn't. This is the best job I ever had, man. <laughs> It was, it was the best job I ever had. Uh, I was telling my girl every day how happy I was to go to work. <laughs> it was just yes. like the best. Um, I remember my first day. I walk on and they have like my, my ship that I that I you know carry all the um, all my you know my passengers, the refugees yeah. that I'm rescuing. Um, that the path uses. When I first stepped on there, I was like. You know, I'm looking at buttons. Like, I'm, it's just like you know, you in Star Wars. Like, it trips you out. And uh, I remember looking at Deborah Child, the director, and being like, "Yo, I'm I'm bugging right now. What do I have to say?" And she was like, "No, you haven't seen anything yet." And I was like, "Wow." And we went into the volume, which mm -hmm. is this giant. I don't know how to describe it. It's almost it's almost as like a small airplane hanger <laughs> and uh, they could digitally put you anywhere, anywhere they want. Um, they, they change your entire surrounding. I, I, I kind of describe it as, you know, uh, you know, in the, in the first matrix movie, when Morpheus takes Neo and it's just like all white around them. Yeah. 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 So just imagine whatever room you're in right now. And they're like, all right, that's a wrap. And every wall around you right now turned bright white. It's just <laughs> you don't understand what it does to your mind to not really be where you are. And it, 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 really, it really trips you out. And um, it was the, the best crew I've ever had to deal with. Everybody 
was just so excited to be a part of a franchise like that. And they were they were a big family on that set of Kenobi. And uh, you get to kick it with you and McGregor all day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, he uh, whenever he would have his like his full robe on, and uh, he let me uh, hold the the lightsaber that they use for the for the stunts, and uh, mm. his like his his hero saber, which mm. is like what he wears on his hip, it's heavy as hell. But yeah. Uh, yeah, man, it was great. It was some days where I didn't even have to work. I just showed up. Because you're just happy to be there. Yeah, yeah man. So I got to kick it with uh kick it with Hayden a little bit, kick it with uh yeah. with Ewan, which is a, a childhood dream of mine. Me and my sister Karima would reenact the final battle between Anakin and Obi Wan like all the time, playing the soundtrack. And I got to take her to the Star Wars celebration. And we actually got to take a photo with the two people that we were pretending to be as as kids. So it was um it was a dream come true, man. I'm I wait by my phone every day waiting for them to call me back. <laughs> <laughs> man, you got and that was one of our uh, one of our questions was gonna ask you about that. You wanna, go ahead and <laughs> go and ask that one. And no. we, have, we have one that we yeah, wanted so, to know. Yeah, we're, we're all getting Obi Wan was you know uh, I think overall everyone loved it you know uh, and it it was such a great show. Uh, kind of gave us more of that that scene you mentioned. We've all said you know I have the higher ground like that's like a classic yeah, yeah, yeah. line. Yes. To see the story after and where it's gone, I mean, I have to imagine. I mean, it seems like it was a, a great success, but uh, obviously, it seems like you're interested in in coming back uh, for that role again if they'll have you. No people can ask me to do whatever, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's ready to be like the Star Wars janitor if that's really? what they need. Like, <laughs> like where he two days and shows up at the gym. <laughs> the thing is, like, they gave me a, a dope character too. Yes. Man. You know, Roken is in, in in a lot of ways the godfather of the rebellion. You yes, know? first one of the first like the first group to go around saving force sensitive people, and that leads you down the path of rebellion. So you know, I um, I express how how honored I was to be in in the Star Wars lore because. You know, little black kids can't just be dressing up as Lando every year. We can't be Mace Windu. Yes. <laughs> so I was, you know, I was happy me, me and uh, Moses Ingram holding it down. Um, yes, I loved her performance. How was how amazing was that? She's so dope. She's just uh, you know, very welcoming person. Um, you know, very very approachable and just as excited as anybody to be a part of the the Star Wars lore and uh you know, we all we all grew up fans and we all have our, you know, our moments where, you know, every time I go into any automatic door, I hit it with the just you know, <laughs> yeah, you just, don't do that, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, and she's a fan just like the rest of us are. And, and if you could just see the look on the actors faces our, our first couple of days, even though she tried to. Let me tell you a little story about Moses. So <laughs> that's a way of it. We was in the hair and makeup trailer, and she is, you know, dressed dressed up in the nines. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, are you an inquisitor? She said, I can't tell you. I said, you. I mean, I know Star Wars. You're trying, you dress <laughs> inquisitor. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, it was a it's a, it was a, it's a tight wrap set. I don't even get my lines the day before. You have to get them on the day in your dress wow. and learn a bunch wow. of words that don't really exist that you've never said before. So it was a uh, it was a test to my acting, but because that my, versatility right there. Yeah, the, because of my my love for the fandom and and just the overall world, I I was, I was easily a, a hand and glove fit. Yeah. You know what? I have to I have to give him props too because I hit him. I was like, I was, we were trying to figure out who you were. Me and for some of my boys. I was like, I hit him with the, you know, are you Quinlan Voss? Like we were trying to figure out who your character was because you know, you being you being. I'm like, yo, my boy is about to be about to be you know part of the Star Wars lore. I had to find out who it was, but you know, your one thing I you spoke to a little bit is your character. Is he's kind of like the um, emotional compass of the show. Like you you really defined what. Um, what the spirit of the rebellion was, right? And also the hurt that comes along with that. You use, like, them taking your your wife, right? Yeah. Um, and I wanted to know, did you know, like, 
that did you know the backstory of your character prior to that or is it do they kind of keep that all under wraps and just saying under wraps and tell you like what emotions you need to you know to show uh it was you know it was kept under wraps uh pretty tight uh, as far as knowing my backstory uh deborah chow was very open with like asking me questions about like how i felt about you know, we're thinking we're thinking uh, this direction for your character. How do you feel about that? And really embraced a one on one uh, relationship with me. And, you know, you don't you don't get that a lot, especially mm. somebody dealing with uh, uh, a fish as big as Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And the way that she was just so welcoming and easy to work with uh, for an actor is a, a dream come true. And. She's one of the coolest ladies I've ever met. You know, Deborah Chow. Any, that's another uh, person that, like, if if she needs me, you know, I'll I'll be there. Uh, I call her Lord Deb because we was on. Star yeah. Wars. It was just like <laughs> you, know, just, you see her walking in, Lord Deb. Good to see you. It's, you know, it's our, our little inside thing, but yeah, it uh, it definitely is kept under wraps tightly, but on the day they'll tell you in the morning, like, hey, by the way, uh, you got a wife and uh, she might be dead. All right, go out there and do it. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, your wife's dead. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate the, the hours in advance, but yeah, <laughs> tight nip shit. That, no, yeah, you know, there's leaks for a lot of stuff, especially Marvel productions, but Star Wars, you don't usually find out anything. They're really good about that, you know, because I think a lot of people on those sets are fans just like we are, you know what I mean? They're just happy to be a part of it, and they ain't trying to mess up that mess that up at all, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, when, when, we, uh, when we would walk outside to get food, they wrap you up in these black robes just in case anybody's taking a picture of you. Yeah. Uh, to mm. just, you know, cover up your costume. They were able to get yeah. one person, but it was you and we know what you look like already. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, you know, know Obi Wan Kenobi's clothes. I wonder but, uh, if yeah. Obi Wan is, I wonder if you and McGregor is playing Obi Wan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obi Wan, what are you doing? <laughs> Hmm, which character is he playing in the Star Wars production? You don't need Walsh for that one, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it was such a big yeah. thing. I think as Star Wars fans, we've always kind of wanted to know, um, you know, what happened, right, after, after but in those in those years between when Obi-Wan, you know, uh, had the high ground and when he was old, right? We kind of wanted yeah. to know that. So getting a little bit of insight into that was very special. Um, I'm really interested to see where it goes. I know you can't speak on it, but I'm I'm really hoping. I don't know. We... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Waiting on my phone every day. I'm hoping we get some Cal Kestis and you know some Cal Kestis yeah, in there right. because oh. yes and yes yeah, some Jedi Fallen Order. That was such an amazing game, and yeah. the fact that it they made it lore, like part of the actual lore of Star Wars. I I think we're we're there's a chance where we could get some you know live action of that, and I'm really hoping they bring your character back because you did a great job, and it was just uh, seeing the like the sparks of the rebellion of where the the spirit of where it comes from. I was uh, interested in. I was wondering, you know, when um when when Obi Wan went into the um you know into their lair and he saw all the the i guess the uh jedi the ones that were that had been captured was yeah the force sensitive sorry yeah the force sensitive tomb were those like supposed to be specific people that we we're supposed to be looking for or was it just like you know random people like was your was your supposed to be your wife there i was wondering about that because yeah you know, I, I, <laughs> i've seen that i've seen that rumor um I mean, it would make sense, but that was yeah. nothing that they, they shared with me. Yeah. Another thing, everybody guessing on Twitter who I was supposed to be, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, my God, I hate how much traction this is getting because you, <laughs> all these people are about to be mad disappointed. <laughs> yeah, <I was> nah. <laughs> like, it is at that time, at that time period in, in which um, the Obi-Wan Kenobi series happens. Yeah. I don't want to be a Jedi. I don't know if you have seen but like the Jedi's don't make it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, that, I've been cool. real good at not dying in movies or stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's true. That's true, actually. I'm trying to keep my streak alive, and if they would have had me a the next like, man, contract, I don't, I don't <laughs> no deaths. That. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But you, yeah. but you know what though? You know what though? Uh, we need more black Jedi. Let's keep it real. Yeah, we I do, mean, we need, you know, you know, well, so, like, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you're right. But you're right. That's the equivalent. Handling someone a, 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 a lightsaber during the middle of the rebellion is the equivalent of being like, I'll be right back in a scary movie. Like, no, you won't. <laughs> what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Your character's like, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, they gone. I'm, I'm dying at the end of this. Yeah. Exactly. I, 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 yeah, All right. Like, it's, almost, it's almost as bad as when, uh, when we were filming Godzilla, I was like, is there a worse job? Being a soldier and a Godzilla <laughs> movie, and then, yeah, it's being a pilot. If you notice, no <laughs> pilots ever make it, bro. You're right. You're right. If you're flying around a giant lizard with a laser <laughs> beam, you're probably not gonna be in Godzilla three. <laughs> facts, facts. Um, before we move on to Lakers, which is the you know the meat and potatoes of why we're here, yeah. um, I do want to ask you. What is your favorite Star Wars character, and also more specifically, your favorite Jedi? If those are not the same, favorite Jedi, hands down, I don't care. Anakin Skywalker. All right, Anakin. Wow. Skywalker. Anakin was right. I don't care what nobody. Uh, <laughs> he was right. Okay. Was he right when he was killing those kids? Was he right? Then? <laughs> he, let, he let the politics, the young politics, get in his head. Okay. So, <laughs> All my dog wanted to do was to love his mama, love his babies, love his wife. And I can't be mad at a man for that. <laughs> He's uh, making valid points. He's making some valid points. If, whole, if Palpatine wasn't like, you know, I know how to save uh, your booboo girl. I'm like, oh, yeah? that That's the whole stick. That's the whole reason. And if, yeah. like, if he just would have just believed in Samuel L. Jackson's black ass, <laughs> he failed. He failed. He failed. He failed. He failed. I can't be mad at a man for that. But the best character in Star Wars, the oh, the one person that everything happens because of this is R two D two. If it wasn't for R two D two, wow, we a lot of some... stuff doesn't go down. We're we're getting some. Uh, we're getting into into the weeds right now. Explain this. I gotta hear this. Oh, so, all right. All First right. of all, let's kick it off with an episode four. R two. Gives the message. He she he is the the last hope deliverer. All right. Yeah. He gives the message to Obi Wan. That R two that don't happen. Uh, R two saves them countless times. I thought you meant like the. I thought you meant like on the negative side. Okay, no, I was no, like, no, no, wait. No, no. no R two is the most important character in all of Star Wars. Oh, oh hands down. The heroes die multiple times without this droid. Oh yeah. Without R two, Star Wars don't happen. That's my favorite character. My personal favorite character is, and it's from the same from the same coaching branch okay. is Ahsoka Tano. <laughs> <laughs> Ahsoka is my girl, yo. She me is. Yo, she, what's up? Yeah, Ahsoka. She, she literally, to me, she embodies like the um, the essence of what the Jedi were, and I think that's why she was spared. Why she didn't die? Because she left when they got corrupt. When she's like, listen, like I I was in here. I've been out. Y'all wasn't with me shooting in the gym. I was yeah. out here. You know what I'm saying? I was out here fighting these Jeff wars. Like, I'm not gonna be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was like, <laughs> <laughs> and then she came back. Oh, she's like, oh, we we have an actual righteous fight to fight. Okay, let me mm. let me handle business. Save Cody. Save all these people. Listen, I got. I just gotta say, she's my favorite. I, I'm so excited to see where they take hers. Uh, take yeah. her story, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm hearing, you know, like you said, we're all fans. We don't know anything that's going on here, but I'm 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 hearing that it might be kind of like the spiritual successor of Rebels, which I think started off kind of weak but ended very strong. So yeah. I'm really excited to see where that goes. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pumped. Um, you never know who I you mean, might see. Are, are y'all doing their thing? Uh, yeah, bro. I don't know, but yeah, I, I'll 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 mess with that answer just because that's. You know, that's Anakin's little family tree. <laughs> so I respect it. I respect it. There's no Ahsoka without Anakin. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Man. So I, I respect yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Cool, yeah. cool. All right. No, now it's time. I'll let you go ahead and set it off, Edwin. We're going to get into Lakers questions. <laughs> All right. So we got, yep, that's exactly, I think, uh, if you're watching this, uh, you know, on YouTube, uh, O'Shea just kind of did like the, uh, you know, and yeah. yeah I, was, uh, I, was looking, I was looking at my... <laughs> I was looking at my girlfriend, baby. It's about to get violent in here. 
Yeah, you know, us Laker fans, you know, I remember O'Shea said he bought the the 2020 uh, championship ring because, you know, he earned that. And we're, we're definitely earning our, our, our losses right now because it's rough out here in Lakerland. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of give you the open ended one. How, how you feeling, O'Shea, right now uh, going into training camp, going into the new season? Uh, unsure. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, everybody was. We kind of put all of our eggs in one basket with the whole Uncle Drew thing, um, but I still believe in uh, in uh, Kyrie Andrew Irving. Uh, oh, I, middle name. We're on middle yeah, name. Yeah, bro. I had to look up what Uncle Drew was. Bro, <laughs> his name. So uh, he really is Uncle Drew. <laughs> he really is Uncle Drew. So, but uh, I still have much faith. Uh, I have one source who I can't air out, but until they get nervous. I'm fine. So, you know, that's just how I'm, I'm living. Uh, usually when we get uh, players uh, traded to the Lakers or free agents, I usually do a post uh, welcoming them and, and those type things. But I need Patrick <laughs> Beverly to kind of earn that tweet a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, I'm happy. Like – it feels wrong, right? It feels wrong. It, it I've feels said wrong. Some things, bro. <laughs> I've said things, and I can't just act like it's okay now because he's some, uh, some gold armor, like, bro. So I need him to kind of uh, win, win my heart a little bit. Yeah, but you we know, have the same thing with Rondo. They they haven't they haven't done like the jersey picture conference thing for for maybe they want to bunch a couple people together we'll, you know I, I, we'll yeah. see what happens and, and it's time to put on our and it's time to put on the hats yeah. maybe they want on to, the like, tinfoil hats at the same time. but uh, yeah the, I, I would I can't imagine what biblical phrase Rob Polinka is going to use to describe you know Pontius Pilate comes back to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Like manna from heaven. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Shout out to shout out to the the Pope known as Contavious, man. I, yeah, I yes, that. man, Le- legend, bro. <laughs> Honestly, I know we. I, I not to to derail it, but there's nothing. I'm never gonna. There's not a picture I'll never forget le- more than the uh, KCP photo where he has the like the ankle monitor like that. That is never gonna happen in the NBA again. What a Hopefully. legend. What a that's a legendary like that's not even to take away not even to make a joke that's crazy like that's legendary like bro you ball you're such a baller like the the judge was like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. Go we, we all gotta go to work yeah. you know what i mean so <laughs> thanks, thanks. Thanks, thanks. how am i supposed to provide your honor you gotta get it done man. Yeah, That's I the power can't. of being a Laker, by the way. Yeah. You can't get it done on any other team. If it was in Detroit, my man's my man's is losing in ninety days. <laughs> <laughs> my, my boy losing his license. My boy, <laughs> all that stuff. He stayed in Detroit. <laughs> Got the orange <laughs> jumpsuit for the warm up, bro. All that. <laughs> <laughs> facts, facts, facts. So, oh. Shay, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you see me here. You know, I'm in Staples in my picture here, and I got, I got my 2020 championship shirt on. You, you know, Petty, he's known yeah. for being a big Laker fan, just like yourself. For those who aren't Laker fans, how would you describe being a Laker fan and what it means to be a Laker fan and be in this culture? Um, I, I usually describe it like this: my, you know, my Lord, my Lord and Savior. You know, the big man upstairs. He blessed me with a, you know, with a life with amazing opportunities and, uh, you know, a beautiful family that, that loves me and, and, you know, takes care of me and, you know, is just so supportive. And then he gave me the second thing. And the second thing was me waking up a Los Angeles Lake. Talk to your talk. <laughs> and, you know, I feel bad for middle America. You know, I feel bad for like Knicks fans. You still got to talk about a championship from the 70s. Um, you know, I feel bad for like, uh, like, I, I mean, I'm happy Chicago got to have Michael Jordan. You know, the, the Bulls logo is iconic because of Michael Jordan. But, you know, I'm a Kobe guy. And, you know, everybody, you know, Mike is Mike. Mike is Mike. But you know what Michael Jordan's biggest flaw was that nobody talks about on none of these sports shows? Michael Jordan was never a Laker. And that's his problem. Like <laughs> let's go. Talk, yo, talk. This is talk it. It's it's crazy when you look at 
the list of the all time the all time scoring list, and like. Six, six or seven of the top ten are Lakers. That's insane. It, it's crazy when you look at the NBA as a whole and every ball, every sock, every basket, every camera, every towel, every jersey got a Laker on it. Got a little crazy. <laughs> it's just like insane when you look at the most points scored in a single game, and that's Laker, Laker, Laker. Like it's it's it's, it's like. It's a blessing. And I feel bad for these single digit franchises, but you know, there's got to be the bottom for you to be at the top. So it's, it's, it's I, I applaud teams like the Milwaukee Bucks. I applaud teams like Toronto and Golden State. They're and, very inspirational stories, aren't they? Yeah, they're inspir- the other <laughs> little tiny eight single digit championship franchises. I applaud you guys. You know, do your thing. But no, know who run this. No, who, <laughs> no, no, who run this. All right, I'm happy to get Rashawn because the King will be back, and I'm not talking about LeBron. I'm talking about the Los Angeles Lakers. The Gold Ball. <laughs> that's the clip. Look, that's the clip we're promoting it with. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it. Uh, <laughs> love that. No, nah, man. I see, and that's what I I appreciate about you. Like you're not. You're not, uh, you're not letting that media, you know what I'm saying? Oh man, they're, they're in a down spiral, downward spiral, worst season they ever had. That don't matter. We could have, uh, we could have 20 more of those in a row and y'all still wouldn't be here. Not nowhere near me, man. If it ain't the, if it's not the Clippers or the Celtics, I'm fine. I'm whatever the hey. whatever was seven. Go ahead, bro. Get yours, my guy. All right. We the yeah. Lakers. We are not. We're, 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 I don't, don't ever want to see a Clippers championship. Not in my lifetime. Even, What's wrong with you, bro? Boston scared the hell out me last year, man. I'm yeah, like, I had to root for Steph on, Curry. You know what I mean? Like, on, Steph, yeah, please, yeah. Steph, please. Yeah, yeah. I was like, one more down. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know, man. Enjoy your little uh, rings over there, Warriors fans, too. I'm really happy yeah, yeah, you get to experience California. that. Go your California. first down. I remember my first dynasty too. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, what you do is, like you know, y'all ain't three peat or nothing, but it, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fine, you know, like yeah. yeah. I mean, repeating is is cute too. It doesn't have yeah, the three. It doesn't have the cool. same ring of it, but it's yeah, it's, it's, cool. it's, it's fine. But you know, just just it's just not it. You know, <laughs> it's it's not Celtic it. fans, Celtic fans always want to come at me. You know, blah blah blah. Or, you only won twelve in uh in L A. But like, shut up, bro. You like, first of all. Y'all not even the real Celtics. The owner traded the team. Y'all really are the Clippers. It's a long conversation. Yeah. Well, yeah. y'all won y'all championships when it was like segregated drinking fountains and all that type. Of <laughs> <stuff>. <laughs> I don't want to hear no, y'all, like noise no more. Bill Russell didn't even like y'all. Bill Russell. Thank his- you. He hated the Celtics more than we did. He wouldn't even let him retire his jersey. They he wouldn't got even- his jersey retired. With his family and his homies, and y'all came to the arena like, would you look at that? His jersey's up there. Yeah. <laughs> when, did when did that happen? When did that happen? He's like, he did it. Yeah. T- he did it on a Tuesday with the doors closed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's beautiful. See, this is and this is what the pettiest, petty of the post, the petty platform is for. Talk your talk. Let them yeah. know. See, they they they, they get caught up in these. 24-hour news cycle. Oh, it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. Yo, the Lakers won a championship two calendar years ago. Yeah, bro. Come on, man. I was cheering. Listen, I I cheered for Andrew Goutlock minutes. (laughs) Okay? I thought Xavier Henry. Yes, I thought Xavier was. Staple, bro. Okay? I thought he was getting his jersey. Earl Clark, my guy. All Ryan right, Cook. I was top gray, my dude. You, know, uh, you think I'm nervous with LeBron James? Yeah. <laughs> Antoine James said, I thought he was about to bring the Lakers back. <laughs> we back, baby. <laughs> we back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic pause. They were not, no. in fact, back. <laughs> I still want a Marcelo Cortas jersey, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Xavier Henry, man, for real. We thought he was like, before injuries, though, he was nice. Yeah. I still think if he didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right, you start put, giving lofty expectations. Back to the playoffs next season. <laughs> <laughs> With Xavier Henry at, at the front. Yo, if, when you got Xavier Henry on your tickets. <laughs> yeah, bro. We, first of all, the boy could fly. All yeah, right? he could jump. Never, never, had, never had hops like that before he was a Laker. I don't care what nobody said. The man was incredible. <laughs> and I don't care what nobody said. Those, those times gave me the fuel to talk as much shit as I do. Because yeah. I'm like, bro, I went on a, a 10-year drought. You think I care about a two-year one? Like, it's all right. I'm fine. There's nothing that, especially not no, you know, shout out to, but not really, Bill Simmons. I don't care what <laughs> Bill Simmons says about anything. Because he just, he loves a good Laker dig. He loves to dig at the Lakers. Yeah, yeah. And, He'd be and real quiet. Championship, that was the first person I thought of was Bill Simmons. When the Celtics lost to the Warriors, I was like, I wonder what Bill's doing. Right Hope he's miserable today, I'm, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I really want to see his emotion and feelings. He should go live, you know what I'm saying? Go live, <laughs> go live next time, you know. Don't be scared. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he'll he will always take an opportunity to to talk about the Lakers when something yes. goes wrong. Hey, we winning? He he, he quiet. Quiet. Well, he was I'm, one of the ones saying, he's like, it's not fair. They got AD for nothing when they were winning the championship. I remember, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now and they, they, they flop on that all the time. They're like, "Oh, we got robbed," and they're like, "Oh, it wasn't fair." They're like, "It should have refused." I'm like, "Which one was? You know, is it Uchi Wally? Is it one Mike? Which one is it? Did we get robbed?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, um, all right, so we have we have some uh, more Lakers questions here for you too. Um, what are your top five Lakers of all time? Ooh. I mean. First three are obvious, so I'm gonna let the last two be like a little different. But Kobe Magic Shaq. Kobe Shaq Magic, because I couldn't really experience magic. Yeah. But I respect the man so damn much. But uh, you know, As a Kobe player. Shaq Magic. <laughs> Kobe Shaq Magic. Uh, <laughs> I had to throw that in there. <laughs> you know, and then uh, you know, it it's hard to not love Powell. You know, it's hard to not love Powell because Powell got me out of my first bit of the dark side. You know, when, like, you know, those days where you were just watching Kobe break records every night and we was watching that to sell tickets. And then there yeah. was a the of Kobe wanting uh, to be traded. And if it wasn't for Powell Gasol, you know, we don't get to really love twenty four the way that I think we we did on that that last leg. So like, I I, mm. I have to put Pal Gasol on my list. Uh, I love that he's going up in the rafters. And I'll then, be there. Yeah, I'll man, there. that that's a that's a great thing. And my my last Lakers spot, you know, obviously I want to give it to LeBron James because I'm so happy that I got LeBron James on my basketball team. But just to stay, just to you know, kind of stay in in the in the Staples era a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a, a dark horse. He's not a player. I gotta go Chick Hearn, and the reason why I go oh, Chick wow. Hearn is because of what what his voice just reminds me of. Um, I recently lost my grandmother uh, in last November, and wow, watching or or hearing Chick. Reminds me of, you know, late nights when we got to pick up my big brother from basketball practice, her cussing out Chick and Stu in the car. And just like, <laughs> you, know, just, you know, Chick was with us when the Lakers were the Lakers, like the unstoppable force that uh, everybody, which is why everybody probably hates us now. But it's, um <laughs> yeah, without like Chick Hearn, Chick Hearn is uh, as much of a Laker as anybody who's put on a Jersey in my eyes. And so every, every list, I, I gotta at least speak on chick. Hearn. We just lost the great Vin Scully as well, but mm -hmm. chick was, that was my, my Vin. I'm not really a baseball dude, but I, I rep my city pretty hard, but yeah. chick, the chick is, I, I feel comfortable putting chick on my top five Laker list. And no, I, that's valid. That's actually really valid. There's not any other, uh, you know, People that, who are in that position who have their own statue, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he 
Like, who? we wouldn't even, the, the term alley-oop, we would not have that without Chick Hearns. How often do we use that? Like, almost every game, like, you know, or on mm-hmm. the, on the, the the basketball court we all these these term terminologies that he he coined we we have because of him so he's an icon i think that's i've never heard that before but that that's valid i'm, I'm not yeah, mad his at name's, it his name's in the ra- rafters and you know not to flex but i've done some work with the sparks as well and that's the name of the media room it's called the chick hearn like press row like his yep. name's everywhere in that stadium <laughs> staples is on chick hearn court i mean like yeah. it's, you know <laughs> <laughs> that's how it is facts facts um, before uh, he's going to close out on the last question, but before we get to that question, um, we kn- he this was also from him too. So you, why don't you give do both of these right here, okay? The oh, so, Kobe. Uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, mention everyone has a Kobe story, so I wanted to know what was your like, most memorable Kobe story, either on or off the court. Man, my most memorable Kobe story. I was. It was probably like 1130, maybe maybe closer to 1 a.m. And I was uh, I was drunk in my house. OK, <laughs> I was, as one is, as one is. Pretty, hammered, pretty hammered in my house. And I was in a I was in a weird position in my career where, like, I was happy, but I wasn't content like I wanted more I felt like I needed to do more I felt like I had got too comfortable uh and uh I needed a push and so in my drunken state I remembered that Kobe followed me on Twitter so I was like you know what I'm a DM Kobe <laughs> oh, I DM <laughs> I DM Kobe. You said him the, the drunk 1 a.m. DM? That's yeah, what bro. Kobe? Like, Listen, man. <laughs> you up? Right, bro. That's a true Laker fan, by the way. <laughs> Me, I'm DMing. This is, you know, some ladies I'm DMing. Nah, oh, he's man. saying Kobe. He's, Kobe right he's, trying, he's trying to bring his game to the next level. Yeah, so I hit Kobe. <laughs> I, I still got the DM, still got everything. I, I, I'll never delete it. Uh, but it was, I, I hit Kobe and I was like, you know, I'm I'm happy where I am. I understand that I'm blessed, but like I I need a push, man. I need I want to go to the next level. I need some sort of motivation. And this is a shot in the dark, but like you've always been my motivation. I, I look at you as my hero. So like, can you send me any movies or any any books or any quotes that you use to kind of pump yourself up to get you there? Um, and so I, I was like, you know, I, I know it's a, it's a lot to ask for. I know you're a busy man, but just let me know if there's anything you can send me. He sends me his telephone number. So I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, do I, uh, do I text him right now? It's kind of late. Uh, so <laughs> the next day I hit him up. Uh, I texted him. I was like, hey, it's O'Shea. Uh, I appreciate you. Hit me, you know, whenever you got time, you know, whatever, man. He was like, all right, bet. I'll call you in a few days. So every day I'm like, hey, he going to call. Come, we going to call. Come, we going to call. And I was Oh, like, you had that phone right next to you at all times. Look, <laughs> that phone was at full charge all time. I can guarantee that. Volume up. And I was, uh, I was doing a table read for this, this show I did called The Now. And uh, my phone started ringing. And I look, and it just say goat. And so I'm like, okay, it's Kobe. Kobe's calling me right now. I'm like, hey, uh, can you give me the uh, like ten minutes? And so like I'm mad as fuck at myself because I'm like, damn, I just I just like uh, text message Kobe instead of answering the phone. Who knows what he's doing? Blah 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 blah. I'm in the Uber going back home, pissed. And he called me back. He called me back, and I'm like, okay, all right. I told the Uber driver, I was like, yo. Kobe's calling me right now. He looked in the mirror. He said, Kobe Bryant? I said, yeah. Not, <laughs> you know, not Kobe Carl. Yeah, Kobe Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the Uber driver turned the radio off. I'm like, all right. Uh, hey, what's up? And so I started talking to Kobe. And I talked to him about, you know, how I'm feeling, uh, where my head is at, how, you know, uh, I know that I'm doing well for myself, but I'm not doing enough. And uh, he was like, that's good. 
I was like, what do you, what do you mean? He was like, no, that feeling that you haven't done anything, you have to hold on to that for as long as you can. And he told me how he feels like, this is right after he won an Oscar, by the way. He was telling me about how he still doesn't feel like he's done enough, you know, after all the championships, after, you know, him retiring and, and you know, getting all the accolades and film and, and all these new ventures that he was doing. He said, I still don't feel like I've done enough. I'll walk a hole in the ground just from pacing in my house. And, um, you know, he was just, he, he told me to hold on to that feeling to never feel like I've done enough. And it'll keep that fire in me, that drive to keep moving forward. And as long as I keep that in the back of my head, that there'll always be something uh, pushing you in your back. And we talked about our parents. Uh, his dad obviously was, uh, was in the league. So when he's walking in his dad's footsteps, he had to hear a lot of the same things that I had to hear when I started my acting career. And, you know, he told me uh, stories about his pops. I, I told him stories about mine. And he said, uh, he let me know that you, your parents are never going to want anything to happen to you. So they always are going to want you to just do the safest route. But sometimes you got to know what you can do and just go for it. And we talked for 25 minutes. It's like almost on the dot, 25 minutes. And uh, yeah, we um, we hung up the phone. I went and, and told my family, like I, you know, I was pumped. Uh, I ran into him one more time at the uh, it was a little Just Mercy screening in Philadelphia, and um, about two months later, I started Swagger. And right went like the first day of filming. The day before was January 26th when he passed away. And the wow. when I left out, I, we were doing a rehearsal. I went to the truck. And uh, like as soon as I touched the, the handle of the truck, the whole set runs out. And they're like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. And like, I swear to God on everything I love, uh, I looked at the first AD. It was a guy named Austin. I looked at him and I said, is it about the Lakers? And he was like, it's worse. And so now I'm thinking it's about my dad. So I take out my phone and I'm looking. And I got about 30 messages. Uh, and it's all from my friends, all from uh, mm. it's like my, my publicist at the time, TMZ, like all that stuff was there. And uh, I was speechless. And the reason why that conversation is my favorite Kobe moment is because like, if I didn't have that, that, that liquid courage that night <laughs> to, to hit my hero, uh, I would have never been able to talk to him on the phone. And my first conversation with Kobe on the phone was my last conversation with Kobe on the phone. And if it wasn't for that night, I would have never had that experience. So like that conversation, that 25 minute conversation in the back of an Uber, is my favorite Kobe Bryant moment. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, I think we all have those Kobe moments, even though, obviously, uh, you know, he, he didn't, he, I never DM'd him, he never gave me his number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, me and Kobe didn't get the text. Or, yeah, know, we, we, we weren't in the first two bases. Like, I was in the first name with him, but he wasn't in the first name with me, you know? But, <laughs> but he inspired all of us. I don't think any of us are on this call if it was, isn't for Kobe Bryant. And, you know, I think that's why we felt it so much when he did pass, because, you know, L.A. feels that way, you know, that Mamba mentality and, and doing the things you want to do. And, you know, uh, your parents being kind of tentative about, you know, doing things that are risky versus doing something safe. So I think we all resonate with that. Thank you so much for yeah. sharing that. that that's uh, yeah. a very touching story there. Yeah, and uh, in 2020, when we was on our run for Kobe and uh, and everybody on, on Twitter killing us Laker fans for all the connections that we made with Kobe, whether it be uh, – you know, the the Lakers and their their 32nd time in the finals, 24 plus 8 is 32. And, and you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. Just, just everything that we was doing. Yeah. Y'all can't be mad that even in death, Kobe is still putting up numbers. Facts. Bars. <laughs> Bars. Like, bro. Mama jerseys were won every game except that game five, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, so, Miami. Well, Dicks. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we, still got, we still got the game that mattered, though, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Game six. By the so, way, um, I hate white jerseys. I just want to say this because I know a lot of Lakers fans watching. I hate white jerseys. White jerseys are whack. 
We got to stop <laughs> wearing white jerseys. No more Sunday whites. Gold. I'm done with white, bro. The only, <laughs> the only white jersey I have is Alonzo Ball jersey, so maybe you're onto something there. <laughs> bro, we, got, we got two cool moments in white jerseys. Kobe's 81, LeBron's first Laker chip. That's it. There's literally nothing else cool about these jerseys. I'm done with them. I'm tired of them. You heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. Laker Nation is officially done with the white jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> He's calling it in there. Um, you know, I saw I saw um, a few of your interviews. You know, you know before you know we had this one here, and I saw on the Rich Eisen show you were wearing the Golden Knight Dragon Ball Z. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 shout out Javi. Shout out yeah, to so Javi. I wanted to know yeah. what was your one? How many? Uh, how much merch do you have from Golden Knight? Because he takes half my check every other Friday. And two. Uh, <laughs> 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 what was the second part? Uh, which one's your favorite of all the merch you got from from Golden Knight? Uh, I for sure got uh, the Goku in the black and the gray. Uh, so it's probably going to be that. that. I get the most compliments because everybody, you know, anytime you see you see Goku with some Laker fit, it's like, oh, where'd you get that? I like my, uh, I love the quality of his shirts too. They like, yeah. it's, it's some real deal. It's not nothing. You know, shout out to Target. Gilden. Like, it's no thin Target shirt. Like, yeah, them Target shirts yeah. be hitting different. <laughs> you are not lying. Like, once you watch them, that, that's it. Yeah, bro. <laughs> he's, got, he's got some high-quality shirts. Uh, yeah, I got I to gotta go with my, my Goku and my Batman. Uh, I rock those the most. That blue Vegeta went crazy. Imagine. That was yes. insane. Um, yeah, the uh, uh, I still wear my AD on the way. Uh, uh, uh and my favorite gotta be winning for Kobe. My winning for Kobe, uh, yeah. I wear that to work out, you know. So, <laughs> just, yeah, I gotta go with the uh, the yeah. winning. For Kobe. Oh, wait, I got- <laughs> wait, I got one more Kobe story. Okay, no, well, I, we're here sorry. for it. We're here I'm for sorry, it. Sorry, I'm sorry, I just remember. My, <laughs> no, right. we're here for it, bro. That's what well, we're straight, here for. Straight out of Compton, probably out for probably about you know a couple months or whatever. And uh, my my agent hit me up like, "Yo, you want to go to uh, you want to go to the Laker game?" I was like, "Duh!" And he was like, "Like, you want to <laughs> sit on the court?" I was like, "Absolutely!" It's Kobe's last season. I was like, "Yeah, mm. I need to go." So it was it's Lakers versus Thunder. I'm giving Kevin Durant the business. I am like in his ear <laughs> every time down the court. If you look online, it's a picture of me. It's Drake and. and Mark Wahlberg's girl and Mark Wahlberg on the side of me. And I am giving them, I'm giving uh, Durant and Westbrook the business. And uh, at halftime, I'm talking to Ramona Shelburne uh, on the court, and my back is to the court, and I feel, and I'm like, this motherfucking Kevin Durant about to swing on me, bro. (laughs) (laughs) And I turn around, and it was Kobe. And Kobe looked at me, and he was like, hey, man, you finally made it down here. I was like, how did you know? And like, <laughs> or whatever, and uh, you know, went in for the hug. But I was just so happy to meet Kobe that when we hugged, I closed my eyes. <laughs> and, and Ramona, Ramona comes and taps me on my back and goes, "You know, I saw that, right?" <laughs> um, dead Kobe, man. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> He's here to slander her on Twitter. She had it. She had it ready. She's like, I want to put that thing on you. I got you. Oh my god! Yep. I'm happy, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, mama. Sorry to go back, but yeah, no. Nah, you, 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 have you seen that new She Hulk episode with with uh, Megan Thee Stallion? When she's like, I'll kill for you. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. That oh, was you right there. God, <laughs> nah, man, we love it, dude. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Edwin, take us out. Yeah, so uh, once again, this is the Petty in the Post web show. Special guest, Jose Jackson, thank you so much for being on here. Uh, you can follow Petty at Petty SLA, myself at ecreates 88 And O'Shea, what's your exact handle on Twitter? My handle on everything is at O'Shea Jackson Jr. It is not creative, so you can find me easy. <laughs> I want to say uh, rest in peace to... Uh, Rap legend Pat Stay, and uh, mm. also Laker fans out there, if you see me in the streets, Lakers in five. Woo! All right, there we go. That's a wrap. All eyes on me, coming out the league.